Hi there everyone, it is currently the morning of the 30th of August 2011, so good morning to everybody here across the Western Pacific as we walk, continue to watch two very active tropical systems out here, starting off with Tropical Storm Namable moving off towards the west over China today, producing a lot of precipitation throughout this entire region. Not so much a wind event anymore with the system, but still continues to drop a lot of rain, especially over Taiwan here as well. And also Tropical Storm Talos, expecting this to upgrade to a typhoon status here in the next 48 hours. Get a little more into that but first we're going to start off here with the remnants are basically still moving out towards the west here of this uh, tropical storm Nambo or 14w is a nomenclature on this storm and just taking a quick look at radar, it's still a very active storm out here and still a lot of precipitation being dumped along southern uh, Taiwan here. Actually, uh, James Reynolds from TyphoonPerry.com here in southern Taiwan set a lot of power lines down and really the roads are kind of cut off down here as the system passed that by. Still only one report of a death coming out of here yet. Hopefully that number does not continue to climb as we continue to get more news out of Taiwan and communications are starting to be returned after the storm passed basically in the last 48 hours, reaching uh, basically typhoon status as it Made landfall here on the base of uh, Taiwan and along the east coast here a lot of precipitation fell actually if we look back on some of the radars it was basically a buildup here along the mountains and a lot of this area in here did experience some flooding and possibly of some mudslides throughout this entire region so continuing to watch is still a developing story even though the system does continue to track off towards the west and away from the country but still a lot of rainfall throughout and speaking of it tracking off and away from the country this is the 18 Zulu or about 0 300 this morning for uh, Japan standard time of this uh, warning for tropical storm Nambul moving off towards the west over eastern China expecting this to dissipate out over the next 24 hours but still bringing a lot of rain throughout this region and really kind of recovery effort actually since uh, much of this region has been experiencing a drought so really kind of some welcomed rain throughout much of eastern China expecting this to remain north of Hong Kong the Hong Kong Observatory actually just continuing to watch this storm but they really haven't put out any official warnings on as far as any events within the city as they continue to expect to track towards the north as shown on the Hong Kong Observatories uh, forecast to track for the system as well. So, just going to continue to watch this here in the next 24 hours and definitely looking for some reports to come out of Taiwan. Already about uh, 18 reports of deaths here in northern Luzon. Really kind of a sad story there as the system did track over the region, made landfall as a super typhoon up near Apari here on the northeast coast. And we still continue to get reports of widespread destruction throughout this region. A lot of mudslides actually, since so much of this ground here in northern Luzon is already saturated. So, a lot of mudslide reports coming out of here actually, really just starting about a week ago as the storm approached and continuing to get these reports. So really kind of a sad story there and continue to watch that and kind of scrub the news sources here. So on um, my update this evening, if I do put one out, I'll definitely try to have more information as far as that. But moving on over here towards the east is Tropical Storm Talos or 14W for the nomenclature. Basically just towards the west of Iwotori. Actually, you can see some of the islands of Iwotori right in here. Actually, if we zoom in on it, you can get a better look at some of these islands right in here. So right now, still a tropical storm. As you can see, a lot of convection very wide amount of vorticity all around this system but there is a lot of dry air flow coming in from the north a lot of subsidence getting knocked down actually the entire western side is really exposed right in here these are all low clouds right in here so the entire tops of the uh, clouds are really just kind of knocked off so continuing to see a lot of dry air invection into this also continuing to see these clouds top knocked off so really kind of suppressing the development out of this still expecting it to build up the typhoon status but not as rapidly as one would anticipate given that it is over some uh, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius you see a sea surface temperatures right in here and it does have an adequate amount of inflow coming in from the south but to the north actually on the KMA analysis you can see these two high pressures at the surface off towards the north you do have the tropical storm actually uh, KMA or the Koreans actually calling this a typhoon now as they are expecting the winds at 98 68 knots right now but I'm basing this off purely off of what JMA is currently reporting and they are expecting it to develop towards a typhoon status but basically with these two high pressures it is moving off towards the north into the weakness of these two right in here kind of see some troughing right in the middle of here and actually looking at the streamline analysis as shown yes you can see this law in the high pressure here towards the east and towards the west and this is where the storm's going to track it's going to want to run downhill like water basically towards lower areas and it's right in this region right here and unfortunately right over the contour plane and also as i didn't really mention yesterday is right over the uh, tsunami stricken area here up towards the northeast 
this entire region right in here, basically the Fukushima prefecture, and also the uh, Sendai, really Sendai, the city of Sendai, right, located right in here as well. And they're going to get a massive amount of precipitation with this storm, and that could possibly trigger some mudslides. We actually saw that back earlier in the year when we had a system run up here along the east coast. A lot of mudslides were triggered, and actually up reports of 23 deaths recorded because the storm came up here, and a lot of the soil was basically already loose due to the earthquake and tsunami, and mudslides and flooding were triggered exceptionally easy. But here's the current model output actually from 12Z last night. Uh, basically the consensus is very concise on the fact that this is going to track over the contal plane, bringing a lot of winds and a lot of precipitation here, possibly winds upwards of typhoon status here along the Tokyo metro area. But really I'm expecting this to rapidly decrease just prior to landfall due to that subsidence with a high pressure increased vertical wind shear and also land interaction here with the Alps. So it likely not going to be as intense as it's going to max out. Uh, JMA actually showing a max out about 70 knots, got something to 100 or not, but prior to landfall, I am expecting some decrease in intensification with the system just before making, uh, basically moving over the metro area here in the Chiba prefecture, the Kanagawa prefecture, Tokyo prefectures, and basically chugging off towards the north here as well. And also looking at the intensity outlook here as well, J2WC going a little bit stronger than what GFS is showing here, definitely much stronger with no gaps showing. These are the two big models of choice I like to use as well. Uh, no gaps really down here in the purple. They're keeping the system relatively weak, and actually they have been matching up with a lot of the intensity of the system already. They've really been uh, focusing on the fact that it really can't organization together in midst of the center of the circulation due to the dry eye vection. So really they are keeping it it's a little bit weak here. Also looking at GFS, they actually have a weakening then increasing again as well, but weaker than much of these other ones that are out here. So really kind of looking at a max intensity about 65 to 70 knots. That is my thoughts right now. I know it's a little bit lower than what many other people are saying. They're saying upwards about 80 to 90, but due to all that substance and due to all the dry air advection off towards the north and also like looking like some increased in vertical wind shear, I don't think it's going to get that strong. On that note, though, it does not mean that people do not need to prepare for their system. It is still going to bring some high winds. Definitely uh, take in all your stuff from outside. Stay indoors as it passes by the Tokyo metro area here. Really haven't seen a uh, typhoon up in this region in quite a while. And we have seen them skirt the coast, pass by, but not one really making landfall over the mainland area here. And uh, actually, it's been about a few years since basically directly towards the top of the Tokyo area. So just going to continue the watches here. And definitely the track could change, swing off towards the west or the east depending on how much this high pressure uh, basically moves retrogrades off towards the west here as well but definitely going to be a big heavy rain event for over much of the Japanese Alps and really going to bring some high winds here and definitely tropical storm force winds out ahead of the system as well which is already being indicated by JMA putting out actually warnings up and down the coast here basically high surf warnings due to uh, the storm approaching going to be seeing a lot of high waves out here so definitely if you venture out towards the beach anywhere in this entire region even somewhere inland here like uh, for example some of these uh, beaches here in Sagami Wan I know there's a lot of popular ones from Tokyo people go down to uh, definitely going to be seeing some swells possibly throughout here and a possibility of rip currents and uh, JMA are already putting this out and already looking out ahead prior to landfall of the system so Please continue to check that website. That's JMA, their Japan Meteorological Agency, as well for any official warnings coming out of this. And we're going to continue to watch this uh, tropical storm down here moving over China as well today. So uh, a lot of active systems going on out here. Uh, one system I did not mention is another invest clear down here towards the east of Guam. Actually, you can kind of see a blow up right in here. Uh, really non-kicker right out here, but just going to continue to watch that as well. But thanks again for w listening, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them here or at westernpacificweather.com. I'm also posting this at storm2k.org and lastly starting a collaboration with 28storms.com actually uh, a lot of uh, coverage out there in the Atlantic with that website but they're looking at the trying to branch out here towards the western Pacific as well so stay safe out there everybody have a great day and thanks for listening